Hello, it is time to revisit Ame's bookshelf. I am Ame Hana Arashi or Teresa Garcia. I am an author, a poet, an artist, and a klutz. I'm not feeling all that well today, so I decided I was going to use face rig instead of showing off the beautiful hair that my daughter did for me. There are a couple of book reviews that I need to catch up on. And before I start that, I would like to apologize for not being the fox because I could not find the particular fox that I modded on my other machine. So I will be fluffle for now. And the first of the books that I would like to review is called The Circle of Caridwin. This is written by Octavia Randolph, and I discovered it via Facebook, actually. I obtained it for free. It was It's only available for free for a limited time, so I was lucky enough to see that ad to get in contact with the author for the copy. You can find this on Amazon. And there are several other books in the series so far, which I look forward to reading when I get the chance. The Circle of Caridwin places us in, well, you know, the Danes are invading. You, so you've got some Viking action going on. You're taken through a few different kingdoms. And Caridwin is our heroine. Caridwin is born a pagan in a world quickly becoming Christian. So she has a lot on her plate there. She loses her father at a very early age. She then loses her uncle at a very early age who had taken her in to raise her as his own. She ends up being taken into the care of the local church. So she grows up leading a very, uh, she's a sheltered life comparatively, but she could have been treated a lot differently had her life gone a different way. She eventually comes of age to get what is left of her inheritance, which isn't a whole great deal. She also, shortly before she leaves the Priory, actually meets her mysterious mother, whom she had never known. There is quite a bit left around the nature between her mother and her father and the various men of the area. You are left to suspect that this woman may have been a priestess of some sort. Or at least that's what I drew from it, because she does speak mention of some runes. Caridwen leaves and eventually meets up with a young lady who is being sold off, to put it bluntly, into marriage by her father to an invading dame in return for a peace treaty. They quickly become friends, and she manages to keep this young lady somewhat calm and to be a good influence on her, despite being pagan at heart, whereas this lady that she gets hired into the service of is quite steadfastly Christian. The time with the Danes is very interesting because her lady does come to regard her new husband after quite a long time. And Caridwen herself is the subject of a crush by a young man by the name of Sidrock. Eventually, the lady's Paramour ends up coming into the 
story. And he is discovered underneath. And just, you really absolutely have to read to find out how he gets there in the state he was discovered in. It was not pretty, and it was enough to make Caridwen decide that in order to protect her lady, she needed to abscond with this guy for his own safety as well as hers and get him home. You're going to have to read to find out what transpires between those two. But Caridwin's story overall is more of a peacemaker than a romance. There is a lot more adventure and intrigue to it than a simple romance. I highly recommend it as a historical fiction romance. Small r there. Although the romance does come into play a lot. It's not the most driving force, in my opinion. So I highly look forward to reading the other books that follow The Circle of Caridwin by Octavia Randolph. I suggest you read it. Attempting to somewhat catch up with the overdue book reviews, there is another book that I would like to talk about. And as soon as I get the Kindle loaded up so that I can recall the author and the title completely accurately, I will give that. So, of course, instead it opens up the hour of meeting evil spirits at Brew Brew, because that's what I had been reading. <clears throat> but I'm trying to get to the one I want to talk about. <clears throat> and there we go. This next book now that I've finally gotten it to load, that I want to talk about, is entitled A Gleam of Light by T.J. and M.L. Wolf. This was brought to my attention. I forget who brought it to my attention, but it was an email sent to me. Now, this story follows Una, a name I absolutely love and I'm so happy to see being used by somebody. Now, my readers will know that I have written about a woman named Blowing Wind in my Dragon Shaman series, who is of mixed blood, part of that being Native American. So that character lives between two worlds, just like Una from A Gleam of Light does. Now, instead of being Apache like my character, Una is Hopi. Una gets to go with her activist parents on a plane which goes over the desert, of course, and encounters the unexplainable. Several characters meet up for the very first time in this scene where we have aliens outside the aircraft in the storm. Going past that scene, Una grows up, having lost her parents, she has to leave the reservation behind in order to move on and heal. So she ends up going to Washington, D.C. to work there. I forget exactly what her job is, but it has something to do with the... Uh, I, I would have to read it again to find what exactly her job is, but it is a very important bureau that deals with land. It is not the BLM. It's not the Bureau of Land Management, which is indeed the real BLM. <clears throat> Pull myself away from that. 
She gets a letter calling her back to the reservation from one of her old friends because she, working in D.C., might have the connections they need in order to help them with their little problem because the army has moved in and is taking over the Sacred Peaks where one of their explorers from the Explorers Club has mysteriously died. You go through the book and there is a whole lot of strange things paralleling aliens with the sky people, the Kachinas, pointing out a lot of the different similarities. And the adventure that Una follows with some of the people that she met up with first on that fateful plane ride. So, I highly suggest reading this book once again. That is A Gleam of Light. It is available on Amazon. And I am looking forward to when the other two books in the trilogy come out. Thank you very much for stopping by today. I'm sorry I'm not at my best. I'm sorry that I have been a bit lax in putting up the book reviews and the poetry videos and meditations. But I have been rather swamped lately 